Hi, my name is Chris Munson, and I just wanted to take a few minutes here to show you how to use a uh, piece of uh, video effects software that I wrote um, to do two separate effects. The first one is an ASCII art effect, which you're seeing right here. Uh, it takes a piece of video and uh, basically turns it into uh, a bunch of text characters that make up that same image or a representative image of it. Uh, and then the other effect is a pointillism artifact which you're seeing right here. It's just taking the image and making it uh, so that it's made up of a bunch of different sized circles giving it a uh, pointillism painting type feel. Um, and both are pretty easy to do. Uh, I'm just going to walk you through it here real quick. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to create a still sequence. Um, the effects software reads in a still sequence and then does effects on top of that. The reason it does this is because most of the work that I do uh, is with still sequences instead of actual um, finished video files. Uh, just the, the software that I work through, it, it all exports that way. And really, any nonlinear editing system can do this for you, can provide you with a, a still sequence. So, um, just was the easiest for me to do. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to make one real quick in uh, Blender. Blender is a uh, CG art software, um, but it also has a nonlinear editing system built into it. And it's free and easy to use, so I was just going to use that. Uh, you can get this at www.blender.org and I highly recommend this piece of software. I use it for a lot of things. So I'm just going to add in a uh, video here and then I'm going to drag it so that it is on frame one and then I will set my end frame to be frame 100. And that's basically all I have to do here. So I'm going to switch back over to the default view and change my render preset over here to be uh, 720p, which is the native resolution that file was in. And then uh, next thing I have to do is define where this is going to render to. So I'm just going to make it a folder named bouncing ball and if you put a slash at the end of it, it renders all of the stills into that folder. And I want this to be a JPEG sequence. Uh, so I just select that there. Now we're all good to go. All I have to do is come up here, hit render animation, and away it goes. And that's all there is to that. So I will minimize Blender here. Um, next thing we need to do is download the effects software. Uh, if you haven't done this already, it's at www.serviceproducer.com slash downloads, or you can just go to the Service Producer website and on the sidebar here, go to downloads. Uh, then just scroll down to where you see uh, the video effects processor and download video effects.zip. And then we will just run the software and here it is. Uh, so what we have to do here is um, select the effect we want to use. It's set to ASCII right now. Uh, we can set to pointillism if we want. We'll go through ASCII first. Uh, we have the option to adjust the resolution of the output and this is giving us more or less detail in the image. We can also select uh, if we want this to be color or black and white. Uh, if we want it to be on a white background, black background, or we can change the font. So I'm just going to load in that still sequence that we created, and it's if we just go to the folder we rendered into, which is right here, um, and select the first frame that we want to render, and then hit open, it will load that in. And then um, we'll just leave all these settings to start with here. I'll just hit render and select a folder to render into and hit OK. And as soon as I hit OK, it starts rendering. And it's rendering uh, a fairly low resolution ASCII art uh, image. So I'm just going to bump the resolution up here 
and it got to the end, so I'm just going to render again so we can keep looking at this. All these settings can be adjusted on the fly, so I'm going to turn color on. You can see it's now adding the, the color for each pixel that it's sampling into this. Um, and I'm going to render this one more time. And if I set it to black background, it uh, takes the base background as black and then um, interprets everything else based on that. And so, yeah, it's a really easy effect to use. Um, and all these changes that I'm making on the fly are getting rendered into that still sequence. So uh, it would be a little weird if we looked at it right now because we've got different resolutions scaling throughout it and everything. But anyway, it's, it's really handy to just be able to set up your effect like that and see. So next I'm going to go to the pointillism effect here and hit render again. And um, you can see we've got a uh, real low res pointillism, pointillism effect happening. I'll just crank the resolution up on it. And there we go. That's something a little bit more usable. Um, the higher the resolution you make on this, the, the longer it takes to render. But you can see the general effect you've got going. Uh, I can create some pretty cool looks. So uh, anyway, that's about all there is to that. I'm going to render off one more ASCII version of this just so that I can show you how to combine this back into um, an AVI file if you want to. So I'm just going to hit render one more time and then we can just uh, wait for these frames to render. Um, in fact I'll go ahead and set up the uh, program to combine this back into one uh, file. So I'm just going to load um, I'm just going to go back into Blender here and uh, hit Escape to clear out the uh, the previous render that we did. Go back to video editing. Uh, I'm just going to delete the uh, ball video there. And I'm going to add image. And then I rendered this into the render dump folder on my C drive. Um, so I'm just going to select all of these frames, hit Add Image Strip, and it just adds them into Blender as um, what appears to you to be just one video file. So that's basically all we have to do in this view. I'm going to go back to the default view and just change our, um, our file format here. I'll, I'll just render this as H.264 and um, then I'll just hit render animation and away it goes. It's just combining this into one uh, H.264 uh, AVI file and I can just go to the bouncing ball um, folder right here and there we go. We've got the animation. So that's about all there is to it. Um, if there's any questions that you guys have or if there's anything that I can do to make this more useful for you, just uh, leave a comment um, and I'd be happy to hear from you. Um, also, if you decide to actually use this for something, uh, be sure to leave a comment for me and let me know what you're using it on. Uh, I'd just be really interested to hear about it. Uh, so thanks for watching this, thanks for being interested in it, and I uh, hope you have fun with it.